What up you guys, with Rampage here, what? mixing it up in the 2-5 streets. We actually got Jamin Burton here yeah. and a bunch of other vloggers. A, cameo for a dude with a Pornhub sweater. I mean, it's it's a it's a ride here at the it's Wind. It's a great time here at the Wind. That's why we're always back, yeah. always playing here. Yeah, so we're gonna battle it out here, in for 1500. Gonna try to mix it up. It's a little bit of torture because the tournament that we just busted out of is happening right here. The guy behind us is a legend too. It's just amazing. <laughs> Dives here. Look at what's going on here. <laughs> it's just a stacked line up here with the win. All right, Ethan. Good luck, man. Turn it up. If you guys notice and appreciate that the quality of the vlogs is going up, 67% of you guys don't subscribe to these videos, and I'd really appreciate if we could change that. Drop a subscribe right now if you haven't already, and let's get right into it. We walked past a few blackjack tables, but we're not tempted. We're here to play some poker. We're into the two five or fifteen hundred dollars, and we look down at ten eight of diamonds from middle position. Under the gun raises it up to fifteen dollars. Ten eight of diamonds is good enough for a three bet here. Occasionally, the time is now. We three bet him to fifty dollars, and the player to my left, who we're gonna call Samson, he's our buddy. He four bets us now to hundred and twenty dollars. Under the gun raiser gets out of the way, and the action's back onto me. We didn't three bet ten eight of diamonds to fold to a four bet here. Samson's our buddy. We're gonna try to take some of our friends' chips here. I put in the call. Flop comes deuce nine deuce with two hearts, and I check like I would with my entire range here. Samson decides to check behind so we're gonna see a free turn card which comes the king of clubs on a card like a seven a jack a six or maybe a card that gives us a pair like a ten or an eight we could be firing into Samson here but a king of clubs is gonna hit his range a lot harder than ours there's no point in betting here I check it back over to him Samson goes for the delayed C bet he puts in hundred and five dollars around a third of the pot which is ten high here and no draws I put in the fold and we're gonna let him have that pot Next in note, we look down at pocket 10s from the middle position. Button straddles on, so I raise it up to $35. Folds back around to the straddler who finds a call, so going heads up to the flop. Flop comes ace, jack, seven with two clubs. This is a board that is going to hit our range a lot harder than it will the button, so for that reason, I go for a C bet of $30. Button's not done with the hand just yet. He throws in $30 of his own chips, and we're off to a turn. Turn comes to eight of clubs, so we did turn a gutter to the straight flush. The nine of clubs, the only one left in the deck, would give us a straight flush, but that's not really what we're going for here. When we decide to bet $85 on the turn here, we're really repping all the aces and jacks in our range, primarily just the aces. When we get called, we will have a lot of outs, and any 9, any 10, maybe any club will give us the best hand. So I like our $85 bet here on the turn. The opponent isn't in that category of people who like this bet. He finds a fold and we're going to take down this pot with a pair of 10s. Third hand of the night, we look down at ace queen of clubs from the cutoff, a premium hand. Middle position raises it up to $15 and now the middle position 3 bets him to $45. We have a decision here, but I've been doing some studying off the table, and I find that a 4-bet with ace-queen suited is a lot more favorable for us, so that's what I do. I pop it up to $125, because I don't really want to be going multi-way with two other opponents, even though we will be in position for the most part the rest of the hand. The initial middle position raiser gets out of the way, and the middle position player who put in the 3-bet isn't done with the hand just yet. He throws in a black chip, pulls a couple reds back, and we're off to a flop. Flop's a pretty good one for our range. It comes King 8 4 with two spades, and the opponent checks it over to us. I will have all the ace kings, king queens, and a lot of spade draws here. So, for that reason, there is no reason to check behind. We have to go for the c bet here. I bet a third of the pot. Opponent takes for a little while before ultimately tossing his cards into the muck. So, we're going to take down this pot here with ace high, but I like my decision here to go for the in position c bet. Probably my second favorite hand of the vlog tonight, ace queen of spades from under the gun and I raise it up to $15. Four players put in the call, so going five ways to the flop here with $75 in the pot. Flop comes king eight deuce with two spades. So obviously we flop the nut flush draw here, having the ace of spades in our hand. Against four other opponents, even if I hit a king here, I probably would be doing a lot of checking. So for that reason, I balance my range by also checking here with a draw. Middle position is not a fan of checking. He puts in $75 and the action folds back around to me. There's $75 in the pot, so it's likely he has a strong hand. He could have a set here. He could have king jack or king queen. I doubt he'd have ace king, so he'd probably want to raise me pre but I'm not going anywhere with a strong draw. I put in the call. Turn comes the three of spades. 
bang, we turn the nut flush. We have the absolute nuts on this board. We cannot be beat. And why turn the nuts? I'm not going to be announcing my hand just yet. I start with the check again. With 225 in the pot, middle position now fires a chunky $130 bet. Decisions back onto us, obviously. We're the only two people in the hand. And I'm curious to see what you guys think here. Do you just go for the smooth call and then probably lead out on the river? Or do you go for the check raise here and make it somewhere around three or four hundred dollars? If you said the second option, check raise to the three or four hundred dollar range, you'd have the same thought process as me. That's what I do. I raise it up to three hundred and five dollars. It's a small raise. I don't really want to scare the opponent out of it. It's only 175 more to him. I think he's going to be calling with all of his kings here, and that's in fact what he does after he gets the dealer to count out the bet. He sticks in the additional chips and we're going off to the river. Pretty chunky sized pot here. It comes a seven of hearts. It doesn't pair the board. That's what we were hoping to avoid. And we did. So we still have the nuts on this board. And we're going to go for max value here. The opponent only has around 450 left in his stack. It's only a half pot size bet here. If he had more chips, we could think about going for a small bet relative to his chip stack. So maybe something like five or 600. But here it's a no brainer decision. We put in a stack of green chips and let the dealer know we're all in. Middle position hems and haws, but ultimately finds a call he can't get away from his hand that's music to our ears we obviously have the nuts here and we show him our nuts right on the win poker tables our nuts are exposed opponent has nothing else to do but muck his cards and we're going to stack all of his chips into ours we're off to a great start here winning a 1700 dollars pot we finally get our table change over to Ethan Rampage Poker's table, and Jamin Burton's at the table as well. We have 2400 in our stack. We look down at Ace Deuce of Hearts from the cutoff. Under the Gun raises it up to $15, and against a strong range, we should be cautious with our 3 bets, but I'm not cautious tonight. I 3 bet him up to $50 with Ace Deuce of Hearts. The worst case scenario happens when Ethan to our left puts in the call, and the Under the Gun raiser gets out of the way, so we're going heads up, out of position to a flop with Ethan. 122 in the pot, the flop comes 10, 9, 8 with two hearts. We flop the nut flush draw again. On a very dynamic board, I'm going to be checking a lot of my range here. It's not going to connect too well with this board. We could have pocket 10s, pocket 9s, that's probably about it. We're not going to have too many jack queens here. I check my ace high flush draw over to Ethan, who decides that this is a good board for him to represent, and he bets $35. A very, very, very small bet here. We could be going for some check raises, although what would we be representing? So for that reason, I throw in 35 of my own chips when we're off to the turn, which gives us the nuts. Just casually back-to-back -back nuts on the turn comes a jack of hearts. And like the last hand, I don't want to expose my hand just yet, so I check. Ethan's going to have a lot of sets here, pocket 9s, pocket 8s, pocket 10s. So I expect him to be betting a large portion of the time, although there are three hearts on board, so maybe he's going to exercise some pot control. And that's in fact what he does in this hand. He checks behind on the turn. $192 in the pot, the river comes a 10 of diamonds pairing the board, making it less likely he has pocket 10s, but now pocket 9s and pocket 8s beats us. It's going to be tough to get a lot of value from any straight now. I don't want it to get checked back again here on the river, so I decide to go for a $100 bet. Around half pot here, he should find a call with a lot of two pairs. And if he decides to raise us, we're going to be in a tough spot because he's going to be representing full houses primarily. Ethan thinks about it for a little while before putting in $450 of his chips into the middle. Like I just said, we're in a gross spot here if he raises us and that's what he did. I'm not loving life because although he is an aggressive opponent, which we love, he's representing such a thin range here, a range that does make sense the way he played it. If he had a boat like pocket nines or pocket eights, he would check back the turn a large portion of the time to exercise some pot control against flushes like the ones I have. But it's 350 more dollars for us and we do have the nut flush draw and I'm not gonna be folding. I don't wanna be a nit on my vlog and on his as well. So I stick in my chips, expecting to be shown a boat a large portion of the time. But tonight is not one of those nights. It's our nights, not the opponent. He shows pocket sixes for the air ball bluff. I guess he was trying to represent the boat like I said. But Ace High Flush is going to take down this pot, Ethan. $1,100 coming into our stack. So Ethan's criticizing me on my play there, but don't say what you, you told me. But if you want to see what he said, it's kind of funny. You have to go check out his channel. He has some uh, speculative things to say about the way I played that Ace Deuce of Hearts hand. You'll see it in 2023 when the ball comes Damn, you might want to top up there so I can stack you. All right. <laughs> 
Next hand of note, we have 2800 in our stack. We look down at pocket queens from the under the gun position and I make a standard raise to $20. Middle position, who is our buddy, he's a vlog watcher. He pops it up to $65 and the action folds back around to us. Four betting sounds reasonable. Calling also sounds reasonable against a very good opponent. I left on the ladder of the two and stick in $65 and we're going off to the flop. Having underrepped our hand, the flop comes a7-3 rainbow and we check over to our buddy. He decides to go for around one third pot size bet for $50 and he's going to be doing this here with his entire range and he's not always going to have an ace. So for that reason and given the fact I just called him pre-flop with queens, I stick in two green chips and we're off to a turn. Turns a pretty good card, it comes a nine of diamonds. It shouldn't change too much and I check my action over to our friend again. He decides to go for a chunking bet, $175. He probably has ace king or ace queen, although we do double block ace queen. Occasionally he could have our favorite hand pocket sevens, but we're not gonna gamble today. We're gonna fold our pocket queens. Cause he's a good sport, he shows us his hand and like we thought, ace king is gonna be good here. He's gonna take down that pot. All right, you guys, the hand of the night. This is what you guys came here for. This is the big hand. We have pocket kings on the button and the hijack raises it up to $25. No brainer decision here when the action's on us. We three bet the hijack to $70. Ethan in the small blind, we're expecting him to fold because we just three bet and he's in the small blind, a terrible position. That's not what he does. He four bets us to $240. The hijack has clearly picked up that Ethan's range here is going to be very strong and she gets out of the way and the action's back onto us. We're both sitting very deep in this 2-5 game. He has $2,600. I have $2,700. Could be going for the five bet here, although that pretty much just says I have aces or kings. This instant, I decide to put in the call and we're going to go in position to the flop in a ready bloated pot. The dealer puts out the flop, it comes 7, 8, 9, rainbow, and the action's obviously on Ethan. I expect him to go for a C bet here and that's exactly what he does. He bets around half pot for $275. He'd be doing this here with his entire range, all the ace kings, king queens, and the pocket pairs, the ones that we have beat and that have us beat. No brainer decision here. I'm not getting out of the way just yet. I flick in the call and we're off to the turn. Turns a dynamic one, it comes a six of hearts, although I don't really know what it changes. I don't really expect him to have too many tens in his range unless he has pocket tens. Those are probably just folding or calling preflop, not going for the four bet. So I'm discrediting a lot of tens in his range. He's not done just yet throwing in chips into the middle of the pot. He puts in $650, a very chunky bet. The hands that have us beat are obviously eight Aces and then the occasional sets, although I don't really think he's going to have eights, nines, or sevens. The only hands I think that are bluffing that we have beat are hands that pick up heart draws on the turn. Other than that, it's pretty much just aces and maybe queens. We're going to call here on the turn and proceed with extreme caution on the river. If he fires huge on the river, depending on what it comes, we're probably just going to be giving up, but I'm not giving up just yet. 650 more of my chips are going into the middle and we're off to the river. With nearly $2,400 in the pot, this might be the biggest pot I've ever played with Ethan, comes the Ace of Diamonds, which is pretty much a great card for us. We were already behind pocket aces, although the Ace of Diamonds does make it less likely that he would have that. If he did have us beat in some weird manner, like a set or a straight, something like that, the Ace of Diamonds could also give us an incentive to fold, given the fact that there is an overcard to our pair now. Ethan only has around 12 or 1300 left in his stack, so I expect an all-in is coming our way. That's not what he does though. He bets smaller for $800, which actually shows a lot more strength to me than weakness. I think if he had a hand that we had beat, he'd want to get to showdown in check. So the fact that he's betting not his entire stack here, he's betting $800, probably means that he knows that we're scared of that ace of diamonds on the river and he's trying to get a little bit more value from us. I think about it for a while here. I check my phone after the hand and it was somewhere in the neighborhood of a five to seven minute tank. So there's a big spot here. I really wanted to think about all my options. I just don't really see him going for the bluff here or going for value with a hand that we have beat. So for that reason, I toss my cards into the muck. If you guys are coming from Ethan's video, you'll know now what I have, pocket kings. If you guys haven't seen Ethan's video yet and you want to know what he had, he'll put it up on his vlog. It's Rampage Poker. If you haven't heard of him yet, what are you doing? Get out from under that rock and check out a great content creator. All right, that hand hurt a little bit, but let's try to get some back here with Big Slick, Ace King of Hearts. From the middle position and I raise it up to $20. Our buddy Yutaka in the cutoff raises it up to $65, which seems to be every time we raise it up to $20, he three bets us to 65. Occasionally the four bet here is important to be throwing in, but I decide to go for some deception and I put in $65 going heads up to the flop. Flop's amazing for us. It comes ace, seven, deuce with two spades. And like I would be doing with my entire range, I start with a check. Having three bet us pre-flop, Yutaka goes for the C bet of $50. He's gonna have a lot of ace, queen, ace, king, ace, 
blackjack. And given the fact that we underrepped our hand so far, I think a flat call is in order. I stick in two green chips and we're off to the turn, which comes another seven, the seven of clubs, and I check it over to Yutaka again. I expect that if he has some good aces here, he's going to be firing again. He doesn't want a spade to come in on the river. Surprisingly, though, he checks behind, which means he probably doesn't have an ace or a strong ace in his hand. The river comes to five of hearts, and there's $237 in the middle of the pot. I don't want him to check it behind with a hand like kings or queens. I'm going to go for a little bit of value here with my ace king. And that's what I do. I bet $115 just looking to get paid off with any aces. He snap calls me, so probably could have sized up a little bit larger. Maybe a $250 over pot size bet would have looked a little bluffy and he would have paid us off. Nevertheless, I turn over my ace king expecting him to be good like 100% of the time here. And he's nice enough to show us for the vlog that he had ace 10. Ace 10 is no good, sir. Toss those chips our way and we take down a pretty nice pot to end the night. This guy just got knocked out in 12. I got knocked out 12. I pulled a really good move. The blinds were... What's the called? Were they 60 and 120? I believe he makes it 300. I'm in the blinds. I've got 75 of diamonds. The board comes king, queen, blank. I check, he bets, I call. The turn is a queen. Puts two diamonds on the board. I check, he bets, I raise, he calls. The river's a blank and eight. I lead out big. He tank calls with aces. Had that hand been on the final table, he yeah. mucks it. It's okay, nice hand. It's okay, look, look at the drip. It. He's got a bracelet right there. Each of you got a bracelet. Hey. And we got a ring. And we got a WPT. It's like MJ here with all these rings. And we have, and we have an Arizona State Championship. We got the posse. Hey, hey. good game. Dang, that was a roller coaster, you guys. We got up around 1500 in that game. We had like a 3K stack. Then Ethan decided to do something crazy in that one hand, and he ended up getting there. Oh, well, we still ended up booking a $250 win approximately, so that's pretty good. We'll take that to the bank. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, crazy session here at the win. If you guys made it this far, please like the video, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below. Good luck at the tables. Next video should be from the Golden Nugget. We're about to buy in that one, two uncapped game. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.